Hello everybody. Today I am going to show you how we can build a concept model of this floor lamp. What's going to be interesting in this exercise is how we will plan everything out via the sketching in a very minimalistic way, but already with a little bit of interaction built in. So for example, if I go into here you see I'm actually rotating yeah, the lampshade. Then we're going to build the individual bodies, turn them into components because with components, then we can add joints. And what do joints do? Pretty cool stuff. We can then, well, do mechanical animations or motion studies and all that in direct modeling. That's pretty cool. We will also bring in an existing the light bulb model right into here so we can insert it as a component too. And we'll, I will show you how we can bring files into a current design. Okay, so with all that said, let's get going. I will close this and close this. There we are. We have a new document. First thing what we would like to make sure is the unit system is set to millimeters okay sorry i meant inches wah, wah. and then right click on the root and we turn the timeline off so we are in beautiful direct modeling mode very good okay let's go to the front view first sketch in this lecture like with others i follow by drawing simply everything into one sketch instead of breaking it up into individual sketches like one sketch for one part the main reason the design we're going to build is very simple so i don't want to have to to deal with different sketch objects and honestly while drawing it all in one piece it's like um yeah a little bit of prototyping we can do so we'll start with a line drawing from the center of our world. And this will be 3.5 inches. Okay. Because the base will be seven inches. Then we can draw one line straight up, 11 inches. I just typed in 11 and pressed enter. And then here I just draw a horizontal line and connect this one. Very good. This we will specify later. First, I will draw a vertical, horizontal, and a vertical. I make sure this does not connect to the midpoint. Click, and then I press D, D for sketch dimension. And for example, this line to this line, and that should be 0.5 inches. So later the tube will have one inch material thickness. Now the distance from this edge to here that I just would like to be 0.1. So there's a small base kind of like where this tube goes, uh, not base, a small offset where the tube goes into the base. If they should be flush, then these two points just would be connected. Nice. Here, this we set to 38 inches height-wise. Now we can quit the sketch mode, go into create, and I will revolve this one, right-click, repeat revolve, and then this profile, I revolve along this line. And for the moment, I say new body. Okay, so I have individual bodies I can later then turn on and off, etc. Good. Okay, so um, and that's, for example, good. Now we see mm, this is maybe a little bit too thick. Now nah, an inch is really a lot. Let's say I would like this to be half of an inch. You notice here we specified 0.1 inch of a distance and here we have the thickness. So that's the radius, the diameter is, um, should be half an inch, so this has to be 0.25 inch. Then we can see, oh, this is a lot smaller. Okay, so these two we can delete and quickly do a rebuild. And repeat, right click, and then we go to here. 
And there you see the offset is perfectly maintained. Pretty cool. Yeah, now this feels actually much better. Okay, we will have a ball joint there. So I'm going to hide the bodies. Right click and edit the sketch, circle, and this will be, oh, we can play two inches, one and a half, let's say one and a half inch. I pressed D to add the dimension. Okay, very good. I'm not going to do any more because let's uh, wait a little bit. Uh, let's actually sketch in the arm. So here is now my midpoint. And from there, I draw just a line there. Okay, press escape. Then this line that now will have a length later. Let's say this is actually now we can give this a length of 12 inches. Okay, so from the center to there. Very good. And then when I drag this point, you see how yeah, this line actually rotates. All the stuff here is black, so these lines can't move. This line is blue, so and I can move it. Blue means it is not constrained or locked down. Okay, we have here a material thickness. Here we need a material thickness, so 0.25. Okay, easy. Actually, I'm just goofing around a little bit just to show you what we can do with a line that is not parallel we make it parallel and then here we draw a line to there and i draw a line to there and then here perpendicular 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 oh yeah that, nah, wah, wah. that is already 90 degrees because this is 90 degrees and these two lines are parallel and then here one done so this is a case where you do not use vertical and horizontal because then these lines will be forced to be vertical horizontal. But this way you see I get a nice rectangle that can rotate and has funny motions. So here, this line and this line, let's simply make this equal, finished. Now I can rotate this, pretty cool. Okay, let's give this a good um, angle. So I press D and then I clicked on these two edges and 90 plus 45 is 135. Okay, then actually we can go ahead to here and let's draw onto a sleeve that goes over it. Point one, yeah, that's pretty good. And then this line will be perpendicular there, there. And you see here perpendicular command perfectly works here. So U and U should be equal. And then the length, so I pressed D, whoops, no, not this way, this way is two inches. So it's kind of like a sleeve that can be screwed over it. Okay, pretty cool. Let's see what we have. So we do a revolve, maybe this one along this one, okay. Uh, revolve this one plus now this piece axis this one uh, not cut but a new body thank you just ignore how stuff is there we will fix this later okay uh, that's actually pretty nice we need to create now the sphere that's in the inside easiest way let's um, continue working on our sketch here uh, yeah, I just draw here a vertical line because with this I have, look, these uh, sketch profiles, which I can revolve along this axis into a full sphere. We get a warning here right now, and that's because this is hidden. In case it's also in your case, the body's folder is hidden, that's why. And then uh, now I want a new body. Now we need to also think about how do we do the joinery and then where are these metal pipes actually or how are they attached? Do we have, yeah, how do we do this now? Um, one way is we split this uh, the sphere and then have this pipe on the left and this pipe on the right side. 
so on each half perfectly. I, for simplicity reason, we keep this centered and then one half of the pipe sits on this sphere and one half of this pipe sits on that sphere side. But we have a sphere, that's not, not what we need. Look, we can actually say 180, okay. But I need two of those, okay. So let's make a mirror. Plop there, no, not join. New body, thank you. Okay, pretty cool. So actually at this point now we can start joining pieces a little bit together. And there, join, okay. And you and you. So join also this one and shift this one and shift click this one, join. Okay, so we have like two pieces now. Let me hide this and the sketch and oh, yeah, what do we do here? Direct modeling is pretty cool. So this surface, I would like to be folded over this sphere part. You see how I move this one far back. So now I can go into replace face mode and then select this space as a target and it perfectly folds it over it. So this is actually now, yeah, perfectly following this here. Quite a nice command. And then there we can see how this is partially connected. This is not the best design, but for this uh, beginner level exercise, where we just learn how to model, uh, this is totally fine. So, and then we just do the same here. And also the step-by-step -step way how I change these commands is just one way. Many roads lead to Rome. Cool. Okay, so this is nice. This looks pretty good. Lampshade. Okay, we need the lampshade. So double click onto the sketch. I will turn off bodies, uh, the folder, so I don't see them. And yeah, I would like to have actually somewhere here a joint. So I draw just first a line. Okay. And then from the midpoint of this line, there I draw a circle going to there. You see now this line, this line is perpendicular to this edge, or I could also say this is collinear. So collinear to this line, for example. And what? That doesn't work. It should work there. Don't tell me that. Okay, there we are. Pretty cool. So this is kind of like if we would extrude this a cylinder, but logically, hey, we need a connection here. So how do we do this? Mm, whoops, by not going to exit the sketch, go back to edit sketch. We can refine this first. D.5 mm, 0.6. Yeah, what's actually yeah, let's see if so from there, now we can project a line over just for the sake of visualizing. So with 0.5, then would this hinge visually have the same thickness as this tube? Maybe visually that's pleasing. Okay, good. Let's delete this line. I would like to show you something interesting. Here's a line and I connect it to there. Now this line I will make perpendicular to here. But look how this is not a nice flow onto the sphere. Circle. Wah, wah. The constraint command does it for us when we select tangent. So this line, please be tangent onto this circle. There. And if we make this bigger, this line follows it. Pretty cool. We, if we now want, um, yeah, we can to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. We do the same here. Here, I make this line uh, perpend uh, tangent. I mean, and then perpendicular to here, and oh, oh, this line perpendicular to there. There. Pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean. That works actually pretty nice. So one, two, three, four profiles extrude. And this will later be joined onto this piece. So I will extrude this by 0.2 already. 
But hey, um, give me an offset. I would like to have an offset of 0.1, okay. But then I only need a thickness of 0.12. So you see now how I did this extrusion, but starting at 0.1 distance with a material thickness of 0.1 of an inch. Join, not join, why not join? Um, I could have done the same thing on the other side to make a, another extrude, or I could simply quickly say, hey, here, mirror this over along. Mm. Select mirror plane, oh, I can't select the sketch. I have to select this plane, okay. There it worked. So I made a, a mirror copy, or I could also, well, it's always good practice repeating the same step. So this way, uh, offset minus one, okay. And then also here, one, this might be then minus one, two. Yeah, cool. Yeah, look at that. Now, so pew, 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 no. You, where are you? Oh, I joined this one already. Wah, wah. There. So these two now I can fuse together. The second piece I didn't um, make as a new body because it I made a, a, a extruded a second copy. Because I wanted to mirror this other piece over, now I needed to have a body that's uh, separate. There. Cool. Yeah, now we have actually the kind of like this piece that goes over the tube, including a very basic hinge. Uh, here we have the hinge. Yeah, lampshade. Let's work on the lampshade and back to the sketch. The sketch engine is actually really nice. I have to say that um, coming from other programs, Rhino, Alias, um, SolidWorks, a little bit Inventor. And then I also, oh, I forgot, um, working actually here with these geom geometrical restrictions is really, it's really fun to work with. Because it's like uh, you make a paper model and with needles you put in axes. So to build the uh, lampshade, we do a very funny looking thing like this there. So you see I'm blocking this basically out. We cannot have any horizontal or vertical stuff. I don't know where this one goes to. So I will do this cleanly by this way. So 90 degree, 90, 90, 90. Then D for dimension, this will be four inches. This will be eight inches. This will be 0.5 inches. This will be one inch. And then uh, doo, 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 doo. let's say, so here and here, that is one inch. So it's slightly rotated. Hey, let me show you a little trick. Flop, there we straightened the sketch and now I delete this uh, vertical constraint. Okay, so this piece I would like to be attached onto this ring. How do we do this? We need to have a contact point which I can glue onto this circle. And then this line, I will make tangent to that circle. So we need to have a point, look at that. Point. By the way, if you press S, S is for the search command function. And now I type in point, it finds the command there too. We glue this one onto this line, then D and say U to U, this should be one inch. Very good. Yeah, so now what we can do is whoop, uh, drag this onto that ring or we could also use the coincident constraint which is like glue this one onto the ring and then tangency the line to the ring yeah look at that all the constraints are actually also rotating shelf let's say a constraint here be um not rotating like you see here what you have to do is delete this constraint and then we add in the rotated mode like this, the constraint being parallel to the line that fixes it. 
Yeah, now we can say, so this line to here, that should be, let's say 45 degrees. Now, uh, how does this look 90 degrees? Mm -hmm. Now we can do kind of like a proportional study before really having to do a 3D model. That's actually pretty, pretty fantastic. Now, what I have here, I need to do there too for the joinery. So, zock, zock, and zock, and zock. So, tangent, u to there, and u to there, and then perpendicular, clock, 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 clock. It's getting a little bit of a um, German potato salad here. Actually, um, a German noodle salad is even better because it has Italian influences. Very delicious, by the way. So we have a lot of individual pieces. This is now the downside of drawing everything in one sketch. On the other side, I don't have to switch between different sketch objects. It's so easy to do this. Yeah, it can be confusing, but well, design is hard work. Okay, 45 degrees, that's kind of cool. Let's do the model. So we resolve, I just wanted to say resolve. <laughs> we re revolve this thing 360 degrees. There we are um, as a new body. That's correct too. And then here, there you see, we have now the rest. So you, you and this piece plus you and you um, nope, not that. This one, symmetry, total distance of 0.2. Clong. Yeah. Well, fits in. A uh, little bit of industrial design mechanics. Now, something I learned actually in jewelry. The inner part should always be thicker. That's a more fragile one. The outer ones that can actually be thinner because we have two, two pieces together equals kind of like this. So uh, just a little tip about how we we could build something like this. Now we zoom in. Uh, yeah, this is terrible. We can select this and replace face, wrap this onto that surface. But we do not join everything yet because if we would core this out, we would also core this piece out. So the, the order now is important, point one. Oh, okay, so now we have kind of like a fake thing. It's assumed this is a place where we push the, or insert the press button into. This is pure prototyping right now, conceptual modeling. It's not a manufacturing model. And then we can join these two pieces together. Okay. And this way, this area will not be by accident opened. Cool. Okay. Look at that. Um, see you later. Get a raider. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah. The light bulb. That's actually pretty cool. So now Fusion does not save files on the hard disk on your desktop where you want it caches them somewhere in Autodesk manner, and we can just insert them. But before we can insert this, right click insert design, it'll ask us to save this. So let's save this model. I will call this floor lamp demo. I just simply call this demo because I have floor lamp already. There we are. Now this is saved. Right click and insert into current design. There it is. I can move this to there. Okay, close this. And what do we have? So here's a component. Component, think about like a billing block. If you have an IKEA furniture, every element is a component. And if you have multiple times the same piece, it's a copy of the same component. A screw is a component. And then if you have pieces to put together, that's an assembly like an engine block with all the moving parts inside. So what's interesting here is, so this has a chain, means we cannot edit this. Um, it's linked to the original file. If the original file is updated, this will be changed too. So let's break the link. And then here's a sketch, and we can keep for the moment. 
First thing is we want to rotate that whole uh, thing there. Um, let's rotate this component. So maybe kind of like this. Okay. I'm turning off this bodies because now I would like this to be connected to there. How do we do this here? Point to point. And then we say, oh yeah, from this point, just move to this point. Midpoint. Okay. Cannot do more. Very good. Yeah, no, that's fine. Actually, now this sketch element here, we can delete. I just want this light bulb body. <laughs> Let's go back to move and copy. Uh, select this one and rotate. Uh, rotation axis. No, um, we go to this free move and then here set pivot, go to there. Yeah, so this is actually the center point. Hold on, let me do cancel and undo until we have the sketch again, because you see then there we have also this midpoint uh, or this end point of the sketch can be useful. So this component, I would like to rotate and reset the pivot point kind of like to there. Okay, this is good. Click done. So the pivot point now is positioned and then we can rotate this. Uh, how many degrees is this? Yeah, how much? <laughs> what is that now? Now, good question. Uh, here's a little tip here. This is now how we can work with, with sketches. So I delete this angle. Now I can go ahead and say, make this one vertical. Uh, obviously then here, this vertical, I delete, uh, finish sketch. Okay. Now you see, we have to reposition this one time, but I mean, it's not really a big, big thing. And then we can say, uh, this point to there, mm, there. Thank you. And then the whole thing, we simply move up. A little bit. Oh, wow. What's whoa. <laughs> How did this happen? Um, okay. One more time. Thank you. And no move up. That was a really interesting. No idea. Uh, that's also the reason why I very often rotate my views to make sure things are kind of like in order. We could also have drawn, by the way, this light bulb right into this uh, lampshade. No? I thought like in this exercise, it's interesting to bring over an already designed piece. Very good. Okay. Um, yeah, this obviously is now garbage. Um, <laughs> so how do I solve this one? I think this is the center of rotation. Okay, good. So this means when I go in and say this line to here, this should be 45. Okay. I'm 100% sure that now if we do a rotation and say rotate from here by four, no, thank you. So it's finished by 45 degrees. Oh no, it's 45. Um, okay, good. Yeah, 45 divided by two. There, yeah, it fits on it. Good, good. Yeah. Whew. This actually saved us the, the task to rebuild these pieces. Um, this is maybe a good lesson why when you model something, never model things rotated, just model them ideally horizontal and vertical. It's the easiest way to orient pieces. Okay. I really say, okay, a lot. Okay. Last thing. What can we do now? The joints. So we have a base that stays. We have this arm connected to the base. We have this piece connected to the arm and we have the light bulb connected to the light lamp shade and then the shade connected to here. Cool. Okay. So let's start with the arm. The arm here, I would like to 
add the joint. But for joints, we have to create components first. So I think when we select all bodies here and then do create components from bodies, yeah, we have then all the components. Cool. So what's this one? So that's the arm. Uh, lab shade. There. This is base. Okay, and what is this one? Arm, uh, jo joint, I don't know. Um, yeah, joint, whatever. Very good. So this arm here. So the base I hide, so I only see this arm because the order is not important because this I would like to attach to the base. So let's go to joint. And then when I go to here, you see um, there's a circle and there's a circle midpoint. Oh, that is actually interesting. So there's a plus in this, this is kind of confusing. So we will select the circle because the circle will have, I think an internal midpoint but this should be a revolver. And now I can show the base and I, on the base here, do it that way. Okay, good. So let me do this one more time. So I have the arm hidden joint, click on the ring, we specify this to be, um, did I say revolver, <laughs> revolute? Uh, then we can turn on the base, click select, go to here and well, there you can see how this rotates. Okay, very good. Now let's do a test. Um, drive joint, there's a joint. Okay, see the arm moves and not the, the base. Then this arm we height. Let's go to joint again. And we here select center. This is actually pretty simple. And this should be put onto the center here. And we can also do um, a rotation joint. Let's do a test. Drive joint. Yeah, makes sense. Select this one, drive joint. If we now move this one, two pieces should move. And they do, you see, pretty cool. Okay, so mechanical joints are actually really simple to do. They're really quite fun. So now we need to um, attach this one. That's the next one. Drive joint, no, wrong command. Joint. Uh, yeah, we use this the same thing. One is the geometrical center and the circle center. So here I will do the same. So this, please be on this one. So this side on mm, there. Okay. So this side onto this side. No. So it, because these two pieces sit together. Like if you take your two hands, put and touch them. Uh, inside and inside, and that's basically what it means. Obviously, it makes no sense to attach this one to here because then this whole thing would move to the right side. Cool. Okay, what do we do with the lampshade here? So there, the, the light bulb. I mean, the light bulb. We do um, a rigid. Rigid means it just it's static. So we can select this ring. No, yeah, to this ring, but it doesn't really rotate. Uh -uh, it's just rigid. So you see there is a wiggling and I can move this down a little bit by kind of like, yeah, where we want this to be. Cool. Okay. So stress test. 
when we select this and rotate it, all moves. Oh, it does. Wonderful. If we select this one and rotate it, see that rotates. That's pretty cool. And if we select this one and we rotate it, this rotates. Yeah. Welcome to uh, forward kinematic for mechanical stuff. That's very simple. Uh, and then if you would study graphic design, motion design, character design, it would be inverse kinematic. Inverse kinematic, what does it mean? Think about you with one hand, you take the, your right hand takes the index finger of your left hand. And if you, with your right hand, pull your left hand will follow. And also your arm and everything. That's inverse kinematic. Anyway, I started that too. That's it. We finished it. Cool. Pretty awesome, no? I don't think so.